Hey everyone, this is Mastins, going through the tutorial design and character creation for Steven Reynolds, aka Solar Man. So I primarily use two major techniques in my coloring, which is uh, shading within grayscale and selective coloring, and I'm going to kind of walk you through the process. So getting started here, we uh, see that I'm kind of sketching out some basic shapes uh, to kind of put some form into Steve here. Um, I knew I wanted him to be an all-American kind of uh, character, and right there I just duplicated the layer just to get some sense of the composition. I'm using a normal technical pencil that uh, ships with Procreate. If you want to extend the range, you can actually go through and uh, kind of tweak with some of the settings. I really didn't do too much here. I just kind of went with the normal pencil itself. Um, and then I'm just kind of adding a little bit more details in here just to kind of flesh the character out. Um, trying to make them uh, as bare bones as possible just so I can kind of get a sense of like muscle definition, how his hands and, and legs are going to be positioned, and just kind of as much personality as I was going to give the character in this design breakdown. wasn't going to be doing anything dynamic, just kind of getting a sense uh, of the actual character design. And then once I had kind of the, the basics here, just kind of added a little bit more detail in, which is what you're seeing now, uh, trying to figure out how I want his arm to be. Notice I'm not doing the hands, and that's because on the left side, he was definitely going to be like hands in pockets, whereas on the right side, I wanted him to be in a superhero pose, a little bit more reminiscent of uh, like a Superman kind of style. Now going back on the left, I'm actually just inking this in kind of uh, playing around with the lips a little bit just because I wasn't super happy with them and I kind of go through a couple of different tweaks on them. And the pen I'm using is an actual custom brush, it's called the G-Pen. Um, I also use the Maru Pen and then a shading G-Pen, which is just a, a G-Pen that I upped the maximum uh, size on it and that allows me to, and you'll see when I'm coloring, it allows me to still have something that's pressurable so I don't have to really erase outside of any lines. Um, it is a custom brush. Uh, you can get, find it online on Procreate's actual website, which is obviously the app that I'm using here for my iPad. So once I finished the left side, I ended up uh, playing around with the right. You can see his arms kind of jumping around. That's just using the transformation uh, feature and then me just kind of tweaking it afterwards. And then as you saw there, I wasn't super happy with the lips, so I decided to go back and, and kind of put some final tweaks on, on that. Once I had both uh, bodies actually designed out and inked in, I went back over and basically kind of made some costuming decisions on here. Like I said for Steve, I wanted him to be kind of an all-American kid, uh, smart but also athletic, uh, just somebody who can be easily identifiable, so I kind of gave him some casual clothes. And now I'm working on the actual design for the Solar Man costume. And originally I kind of wanted to do, like I had a sun idea and uh, kind of more like a hot rod flames and I, it just wasn't really working out so I kind of scrapped it and went for something that was a lot more reminiscent of uh, kind of a three-way cross between Nova and uh, North Star from Alpha Flight and like a little bit of Captain Marvel thrown in especially on the colors but then I ultimately made some other changes so once I came up with that idea um, basically went back over with some more pencil and, and you can kind of see me working from rough and kind of just refining it, refining it until I'm finally happy enough with it to go into the inks, which after I put in these final um, decisions, uh, you can see me do that. Also right here, I'm actually going back and kind of giving like a plated design, which has been really popular in like comic book movies recently. Um, just kind of playing around with that, like if he was in a uh, comic book movie, how his costume might look. Ultimately, I decided not to use it, but I did play around with it and ink it. Now I'm going back and inking this costume right here. This again is just using that, that G pen. You could also use uh, the studio pen that comes with Procreate. It's a really good pen and, and it's usable as well. But for the G pen, it doesn't, uh, the ends of it isn't as uh, light in its opacity. So I ended up going with the G pen, which basically is almost the same pen, but it actually keeps a, a full opacity almost all the way through. So it's a little bit more realistic for using like a nice free flowing ink pen. So once I was happy with kind of the design, uh, I went back over and as you can see, I'm kind of refining down uh, Steve's civilian clothes. I decided that I want him to be kind of like letter jacket to kind of show his, his jock side um, jeans and, and some chucks. His design is gonna look kind of jock-like, um, like one of the popular kids, but then character-wise, I wanted somebody who's, you know, smart, who 
knows his way around a, a science room kind of thing, uh, which kind of goes into his actual origin. So once I was happy with that, went back in just like on the other suit and decided to do some inking here. One of the big tips that I can say for your inking is making sure that your lines have a proper weight. Uh, if you notice like the way his jeans are, uh, they actually kind of have uh, some lines are thinner than others and that's important because it kind of gives the fabric a little bit more weight. And here I'm just flatting in, you can see I'm doing it really quickly. This is using that shading G pen that I use, which is basically just a normal G pen, extra large, which allows me to quickly go through. Every color on here has its own layer, uh, and that allows me to use selection as the technique. As I said before, this would you see I had kind of a Captain Marvel thing going. Ultimately from the blue and red, I ended up going with yellow and blue, and then I brought the blue down a little bit, which you'll see here in a second, to give it a little bit more of a realistic kind of look to it. So now going into shading, this is what I was saying before where I actually do, uh, I shade in grayscale. It's just kind of a habit that I got into when I first started coloring, and I've tried doing color on color as you can see here. It just doesn't feel as natural for me, but as you can see, there's nothing wrong with uh, using this technique. It's totally viable. Um, you really just have to draw to your strengths, realistically. Like, that's the easiest thing to, to do is not force yourself outside of your comfort zone unless you're trying to develop that specific skill set. So by working in grayscale, you'll see like I'll kind of drop in a lot of gray and then I'll erase it back. And it's kind of like uh, working with a big chunk of clay and then having a sculptor kind of like peel that away. I, I kind of take the same approach in my shading. I like to use grayscale so that way I can really see and, and kind of get the feel for where the light is coming from, where the shadows are going to work. Um, again, you don't have to do it this way. Um, you can be doing the same technique already on the color, but for me it's a lot easier to visualize, which is really important when you're working with it because you need to be able to identify it. Now I should say that uh, all of my shading I do in a layer on top of my colors and set it to multiply. I typically work within three layers and then that way when I throw the colors back in, as you can see, it just multiplies down, adds a little bit more realistic shading. We'll talk about screening here in a little bit as well. I just wanted to show you that real quick, slower view. So that on a top layer, I actually made a couple of textures and then multiplied those textures down so the jeans had just the tiniest bit of texture to them, dropped the opacity on that to, to kind of give them a little something. So here using the same technique, I'm working in grayscale. Now how I do this without coloring outside the lines is I actually go to one of the hidden color layers and I actually hit that layer and hit select and then go back up to my shading layer and that allows me to work without having to worry about the constraints of coloring outside the lines because when you're using select you're not able to color anywhere outside of your selection. So that allows me to keep my multiply layers pretty neat. Um, it's a technique I learned from another artist that I saw on YouTube which is pretty cool. Um, I liked it so much I ended up kind of utilizing it myself. And then right here you can see me doing some color tweaking and then on top of all my multiply layers I add a screen layer. I typically will sample the color once that's in, um, that way I can create a little bit more realistic lighting and then I drop that on top of it. So typically you're seeing three multiply layers in a screen layer. Now ultimately I was really happy with kind of how everything turned out with those two costumes but I thought it might be nice to have kind of an intermediary costume kind of a, a kick-ass style or a Sam Raimi, Tobey Maguire, Spider-Man style where it would be like the, the costume that's reminiscent of his final costume without actually being his final costume. And so I was playing around with like a leather jacket at first and then ultimately I decided, you know, what would be kind of cool is maybe give him like a sweatshirt that had the same color scheme, kind of like a, a Rocky kind of style to it with a, a hoodie and, and sweatpants and, and chucks and that's what I ended up doing, which I, I had a lot of fun with because you can kind of add a lot of just the little like wrinkles into the fabric which is kind of fun to play around with. So if you notice I again started rough and then I ended up kind of refining it down and that's done on two separate layers as well. So I, I start on my rough layer, drop the opacity over that, refine it, for, and then on that one again drop the opacity and that's when I finally do my inking. Now with this, I also kind of played around with what to do for a mask, just because I didn't want to give him the Robin style mask. So at first, I kind of had this really bad looking Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle thing, and then I ultimately decided to go with a, a ski mask, just that was simple, kind of easy. And then again, using a G pen for this. And if you can see now a little bit closer, um, how I'm adding weight to certain sides of the line, but not necessarily to everything. Wrinkles within the fabric is normally a lot lighter than, than the heavier lines that you see outside, which kind of set the actual line work.
once it's all inked in here, I once again drop some more flats in, which you're gonna see here in a second once I finish these shoes. And then I brought back the other ant layer, deleted the, the underside so like his arms and his eyes stayed there, but then everything else was his new costume. Merged all that together and then threw in those flats. And again, these flats are done on their own layers. And then I select the bottom layer, which is his skin tone, which covers the entirety of, of his character design. And then I throw in just the kind of the light indicating layers and then drop the opacity on that a little bit, normally to about 50%. And then on top of that, I'm working in a new layer. Now that new layer is the master shading layer, but then I'll make a layer on top of that. As you can see, drop in a bulk of shadow, erase it away until I like it, and then I'll merge that down. So that way I'm not uh, worrying about the master layer because the master layer is when the final piece of that I like and I kind of merge it together into, into one layer. And then depending on how dark it ends up turning out, sometimes I'll drop the opacity and do my third layer on top of that, and sometimes I won't. This time I decided not to, I went straight to screening. And as you can see, that screening really kind of helped lighten it up, but then I decided, you know what, I wanted to go back and add a little bit more shadow, which you were seeing. And once I did all of that, I dropped all three pictures uh, together. I didn't really plan this out originally, so I'm trying to throw a bunch of different textures on, just kind of play around, add a little bit more than just a, a standard on white. So that's what you see me here is just kind of playing around with the, the shadows and, and multiplying it, ultimately having to re-import everything and just kind of experimenting around, which is part of what I love about digital art is you can really experiment without uh, like sacrificing the integrity of the original piece. And once I had everything here, I ended up going back and you can see kind of on the leftmost picture right now, I'm adding a, a light blue highlight to everything, kind of a, a bounce of light. Sometimes I'll screen this, sometimes I won't. I'll just leave it in normal and maybe drop opacity. It just kind of depends on, on how I'm feeling the light source. And with this, I really liked it. I decided to leave it as normal and then go back a little bit later and I added some rim lighting here, which you'll see. So I'm using the same kind of blue, which is a, a really nice pale blue, and then just adding it selectively to certain things just as the light is catching that those bits of the fabric. So this also kind of helps quantify all of this happening in the, the same piece, even though the middle one was actually from a separate piece. Um, and then going back through, adding some consistency so you can really kind of see the character progression of, you know, from Steve to, to kind of the high school Steve in costume, and then finally to full all out Solar Man, which um, ultimately I, I, I really liked it. It was a lot of fun doing. Um, I had fun coming up with the character design and in writing his backstory, which you'll hopefully see more. But that's about it. And if you want to check me out anywhere else on the internet, these are the places where I normally hang out. So feel free to drop me a line, ask me a question, or subscribe.